Hey everybody, it's Dr. Prax. I'm really looking forward to getting starting with the meeting. I'm here with Karen who invited me to do this webinar. We're starting at six o'clock. It's six oh four. So we're gonna wait a few more minutes for people to roll in here. I'm super excited. We got Olive on. Welcome, Olive. I see Winston and Jessica. We got Jerry. We got Steve. Welcome aboard. Melissa, Deborah, Karen, Julie, Blaze. We got Betty. Hi, Betty. How you doing? I know you can't really talk to me, but that's okay. We are going to get started in just a few minutes, you guys. This, this is going to be the webinar called The Five Best Things You Can Do to Drastically Help with Your CMT. So I'm really looking forward to this. We are live streaming on YouTube. As if that didn't make us a little more nervous, right, Karen? Yes. You're as cool as a the cucumber world, over there. The world is watching. <laughs> we are planning on doing a Q&A afterwards. What else can we say? Well, I do want to thank you all for joining us today for this important webinar on Charcot Marie Tooth, or CMT as we usually call it. As you probably know, CMT is a rare genetic disorder that affects the peripheral nerves, causing progressive weakness, muscle atrophy, and sensory loss. Today, we're fortunate to have Dr. Brian Prax with us, a leading expert in the field of peripheral neuropathy. Dr. Prax has dedicated his career to helping people with CMT and other forms of neuropathy live healthier, more fulfilling lives. He holds a doctorate in chiropractic, is board certified in neuropathy by the American College of Physical Medicine, and has been reversing all types of peripheral neuropathy since 2010. He's the author of the book, Reversing Neuropathy, Making the Impossible Possible. Dr. Prax, welcome. Karen, thank you so much, and I'm glad each and every one of you are here today. I've really been looking forward to doing this ever since Karen asked me to do that. So yes, I do neuropathy, um, all forms of neuropathy, as she said. There are over 100 known causes of neuropathy. CMT is but one of 100 known causes, but that's going to be our total focus today is CMT. And the title of this, the best five things you can do to drastically help your CMT. That's exactly what we're going to be covering. I want you to take some good notes. We're going to do all we can to help you drastically reduce your symptoms and even reverse this thing called peripheral neuropathy of the CMT. So what would a neuropathy seminar be without explaining what is peripheral neuropathy. So let's go over just some general anatomy. Your central nervous system is going to be the thing, the nervous system that's in the center. So that's going to be your brain and your spinal cord. Okay. So brain and spinal cord, those are your onboard computers. That's your computer that pretty much runs everything. Any of these nerves here that exit the spinal cord or exit the brain and go somewhere, those are peripheral to the central nervous system, meaning they're lateral or they're outside of the central nervous system. That's just how anatomists define it. So we're not gonna make it too complex. The body itself doesn't say this is central, this is peripheral. It just, it's just so complex that as anatomists, we have to kind of break it up so we could wrap our minds around it. So the peripheral nerves are those nerves that usually leave the neck and go down into the arms, the hands, and the fingers. Those nerves that leave the lower back go down into the legs, the feet, and the toes. But don't forget, there's also peripheral nerves called the autonomic nervous system that nerves actually leave the brain and they go down and they control our heart, our lungs, our stomach, digestive organs, even the sexual organs are part of the peripheral nervous system. Now all we need to do is define what is opathy, right? So we got peripheral neuropathy. Well, neuro means nerve. We already talked about what peripheral is. Pathy or opathy means a problem with, a pathology. So that's pretty dumb, right? I mean, peripheral neuropathy, we said there's 100 known causes. 
One of them is CMT with peripheral neuropathy. It's damage of the peripheral nerves. So we really need to dive a little bit deeper. That's not very helpful, but I try to try to keep things as simple as possible. So in particular, CMT. If you're here at this webinar right now or watching this on YouTube live, then you probably already know that CMT stands for Charcot Marie Tooth. But did you know where the heck that comes from? Yeah, it's actually, it's actually a group of doctors uh, who came up with this condition, this inherited condition. And those three doctors' names are, wouldn't you know it, uh, they are Dr. Jean Martin Charcot from France and Dr. Pierre Marie from France and Dr. Henry Tooth, who was from the United Kingdom. So that's how they all wanted to have their names attached to it, right? And so maybe they arm wrestled or finger thumb wrestled or something, but they all decided, all right, let's just all three of us get in on this. So that's how we have Charcot Marie Tooth condition. So you probably know this already, but it is actually an inherited disorder that causes damage to those peripheral nerves. Again, those are the nerves that carry the signals from the brain and the spinal cord to muscles, but also to the sensory nerves in the rest of the body. So it is a hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy. Sensory means things that you sense, right? Like pressure, cold, heat, vibration, pinprick, things like that. And the motor neuropathy, that's just a fancy way of saying muscles. So there's nerves that control your muscles. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Here's some facts that we got to bring in a neuropathy, uh, particularly a CMT webinar. So we got to know that CMT is pretty rare. It's not quite as rare as I thought though. It's the most common of all the inherited neuropathies. It affects one in 2,500 people. Now that's not as rare as I thought. I thought maybe this is a misprint. Maybe it's two and a half million people. No, it's 2,500 people. Now the average age of onset for CMT is gonna be in the teenage years. However, some of you on this call right now have been diagnosed in infancy, if you, if you were lucky to figure it out that early. And others may not even know about it or diagnose it into your adult years. We are definitely going to be covering that later. That's really, really important onset. Okay. Now, this is also important because the severity, how bad CMT is or how bad it gets, look at this, varies from person to person even varies within the same family. And you would think, well, well, that's kind of weird. If this is something genetic and I got it from mom and dad, how come my sister doesn't have it? How come my brother doesn't have it, right? So, or how come one of my kids has it and the other one doesn't? So that is gonna be critically important as well. So let's hold that in your noggin for just a little bit because that's gonna be important too and how we can help your neuropathy. Now, Western medicine will tell you that there currently is no cure for neuropathy of the CMT variety. Well, they'll even say that for neuropathy in general, but research is ongoing to develop new treatments. Hmm. Even in the alternative world, we haven't found a way to turn the genes off of neuropathy once they've been turned on, but that's important as well. So I know I've got your appetite whetted. Let's go a couple more slides and then we're gonna start sharing with you how we can mitigate, slow down, or even begin to reverse CMT neuropathy. Four types of CMT. Number one, CMT1, that's gonna be the most common type of CMT. This affects about 70% of those folks with CMT. This is important. It is caused by mutations in genes that affect the myelin sheath. And that's the protective covering that surrounds those nerve fibers. So just like the nerves, or rather just like the wires in the wall, that has a rubber and a plastic coating around it. That's gonna help prevent us from arcing and causing fires inside of our walls. But you should also know that in the nerves, they have a protective sheath as well. And that not only stops it from arcing, and maybe if you arc like this, you might get a, supposed to have a sensation in your right hand, and now you have it in your left forehead. That, that is from the myelin sheath. It doesn't really, it's not really wired that way. Uh, and you're not gonna arc out either. But with the myelin sheath, which is made mostly of fat, 
the myelin sheath covers those nerves called the axons, which we'll talk about in a second. And that allows for the speed of those electrical impulses to be proper. They should be fast, right? So we definitely want to make sure we have that myelin sheath. CMT type 1 is going to affect the myelin sheath and destroys it. CMT2. That's the second most common type of CMT. It affects about 20% of those with uh, Charcot-Marie tooth. Now that's caused by mutation in genes that affect the axon. So we just talked about it. The myelin is what covers, the wire is called the axon, okay? So the wire is what actually is what's transmitting those electrical impulses. So if you got problems with the axon, you're gonna have problems transmitting those messages and that's gonna show up as symptoms. You either got weakness or you got sensory problems uh, like burning or tingling or numbness. Let's skip on over to CMT type four. And that's because that's the third most common that affects about 10% of CMT patients. And this is caused by mutations in genes that affect both the myelin sheath and the axon. So both the covering and the wire. But it's, it's uh, the third most common. The one that's the most rare is type three, and that's a, that is affecting about 1% of people with CMT. It's caused mutations in genes that affect the way that nerves are formed. So it kind of, kind of messes those up there. Now, if you're on the seminar, Karen, you may, may be even able to teach this slide right here because you live it. I only research it and I help people with these things. This is just a few of the common ones with CMT. And a lot of these are with neuropathy as well. But CMT is a special one with those muscle nerves called the motor nerves. That's going to affect things like muscle pain. That's going to cause hand tremors. That could cause drop foot because that affects the nerve that lifts our foot up there. Motor nerves can also cause curved or curled fingers, muscle atrophy in legs and arms, curled toes, and even high arches. And for that matter, uh, motor nerves that are damaged will cause or can cause breathing difficulties. For the sensory nerves, the things that feel things, that's going to cause things like cold hands and feet. My feet are freezing all the time. My toes, I can never get them warm enough or they're burning hot, either of those. Obviously, nerve pain, the things that we hear about with the burning, the shooting, stabbing, stinging, weird paresthesias, such as paresthesias are just like weird sensations. Things like, um, hmm, feels like I'm stepping on a cardboard, but there's no cardboard. Feels like my sock is all balled up inside of my shoe, but there's no, there's no sock in the shoe. Uh, feels like ants are crawling up my leg. Feels like my feet are in a campfire. All of those things are nerves gone awry. So numbness is a symptom of the sensory nerves as well. I think I covered all of those. And then chronic fatigue is something special that the CMT sufferers can also have as well. Fatigue, burning pain, et cetera. All right. The most common treatments that you can receive out there, again, any one of you could probably teach this. You've probably been through it already, but we'll usually start with the number three right there. That's the pain medications, right? So medications can help relieve the pain and the burning sensations. Really, there's not a medication for numbness. Um, I guess you could do coffee for fatigue, but pain medication just really help with painful things. Little side note, if your doctor has you on gabapentin and your main symptom is pain or burning or sharp or stabbing, gabapentin could help with that. But if your main symptom is numbness, or maybe even tingling, it's not that likely that gabapentin is gonna help with that. That might be different for you, but it's not that likely. Let's go back to number one, that's physical therapy. I think a good idea, I exercise. We're gonna cover how important exercise is as well, but PT can help strengthen the muscles and improve mobility. I think it's a really smart thing, and that actually helps with the underlying cause, which I'm a fan of. Occupational therapy, that's more of a workaround. I don't have anything against it. I think it's a really smart thing. When we think of occupational therapists, we think about people helping us at work, creating a workstation so we can work with our disabilities. Maybe they help with um, ADA, you know, getting wheelchairs around, things like that. But the occupational therapist can also help with home doing things at home, simple things like standing at the sink. Maybe they help you put grab bars in near the toilet because it can be difficult just sitting down and getting on the toilet, let alone getting off the toilet. So maybe they'll help 
by installing or recommending the installation of grab bars, higher toilet seats. So these are these are workarounds. I do not have a problem with that. I think whatever we can use, these crutches are, are made to help us out and work with our disability. Uh, and that kind of segues over to orthopedic devices. Uh, we can have things like braces, a very common brace for CMT would be for drop foot, or sometimes we call it foot drop. The foot wants to drop, you trip on it, right? And then uh, you, now you're tripping over your toe. So this brace can help hold our foot up like that so we don't trip. I think that's a good idea. Then of course, uh, you know, we've got walkers, we got canes, we got all kinds of different devices that can help us to mitigate those things that we're not so able to do. This is a slide I had a lot of fun with. I like her reaction. I like her emotion. She's like, yes! And that's what I wanted you to get out of this slide. It is possible for people who have the genes that cause CMT to never get the disease. Hmm. So think about it. There probably are people, relatives of yours, probably siblings or children of yours where one has it and the other doesn't, like I alluded to earlier. So we need to figure out how is that possible? And for those adults, especially of child rearing ages, this is critically important because if you have the gene, and there's, there's several different types, but if you have the gene, the dominant gene that could pass down to your kids, it is likely that they could get it. I'm gonna show you how to make that unlikely or at least reduce the risk so your kids don't have to have that gene expression. Okay, I, pretty, I think that's pretty exciting. That's really going to segue into this slide, which is called epigenetics. So this is a super exciting, relatively new study within the science of medicine. Genetics, everybody knows that has to do with genes. Genetics, just a fancy way of saying the study of genes. The genes are that, is that DNA that basically uh, would, uh, you know, determine my color of hair, whether I have a balding pattern, my muscle makeup, how tall I am, all of those things that can be passed from parents on down to children. So we know what genetics are, but what's epi? Well, epi is kind of like peripheral. Epi means outside of. It means not just genetics, but things that can, uh, can affect the genetics. So let's read the actual definition. Epigenetics, the study of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes. I'm reading that slow on purpose that affect the way your genes work. Whoa. I want to read that again. The study of how your behaviors, things that you do on a daily basis and your environment, things around you can cause changes that affect the way your genes work. That's epigenetics. That's really exciting. We're going to dive deeper into it. So basically, Genes are the switches, just like a toggle switch. You turn a switch on, the light comes on. With genetics, switches, genes can be flipped on, and we have a hard time figuring out how to flip them off. This is a warning. If your sister's uh, CMT gene hasn't yet been flipped on, like she's not, she doesn't have CMT, she should really be on this webinar, so we got to make sure we send it out to her. And same for your kids. If they're not expressing the symptoms or haven't been diagnosed with CMT yet, if you do the right things, you can keep that switch in the down position for the rest of their life. Isn't that exciting? Epigenetics. Genes are the switches. Epigenetics are what flips the switches on and off. That's exciting. Okay, so rather than just looking for something to, to help you feel better, medications to help you mitigate your symptoms like that burning, what if we could actually help to flip the switch? Now, I did pick a switch here that has both the toggle switch and the dimmer switch. And this is going to be critically important because what we've figured out so far within epigenetics is that once your switch has been toggled on, we haven't figured out how to toggle it off yet. So I hope I haven't bummed you out. I hope you don't leave the webinar, but I do want to let you know that if we can't figure out how to toggle that thing back off, we can use the dimmer switch. So it may be turned all the way on, but I can show you how to turn it down. Okay, how to turn it down. We may not be able to get it all the way off, but I can show you how to turn it down. Are you excited? You should be jumping for joy. You should be at the edge of your seat. I hope you are. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so it talked about behaviors. That's gonna be lifestyle. 
So I want you to get this. Lifestyle plays a significant role in regulating epigenetic mechanisms and can thus influence the expression of CMT. Lifestyle. What? What do I mean by that? Let me get a drink of water. That's a hint, okay? Hmm. Lifestyle. So things, behaviors that you're doing in your life will affect the dimmer switch. Okay. So diet. I know it's a four letter word. I have so many patients, almost all of them, but so many patients says, well, I've been eating this way for 77 years. I'm not about to change now. Well, I guess it's not bad enough then because epigenetic lifestyle modifications can make your CMT feel better. Absolutely no question. So let's read what I wrote here. Nutritional intake can alter the levels of nutrients and chemicals that affect epigenetic modifications. For example, a diet rich in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds can help prevent DNA changes and damage and reduce inflammation, both of which can trigger epigenetic changes. Conversely, so this is a good diet can turn things down or prevent the switch from ever switching on a great diet. Conversely, a crappy diet or a diet high in processed foods and unhealthy fats can promote these adverse epigenetic changes means it'll make you worse. I'm a big fan of is an anti-inflammatory diet. There are several of them out there. I will just let you know right now, my favorite is the paleo diet and that's represented by this picture. What is it? Food, <laughs> real food, okay? You notice nothing in there comes in a box or a can, it's food. Kind of like our paleolithic ancestors, if you could hunt it or gather it or somehow figure out how to get it from a natural source, that's gonna be good for you. Paleo diet. I also like the keto diet, especially for my diabetics, because keto is going to be all natural foods as well, no processed foods, but really good foods to help drive diabetes down. Diabetes is pretty gnarly too. Woo, I'm having too much fun. So let's go to the next slide. The next slide is about exercise. What would a talk about lifestyle be if I just said diet and didn't do exercise? They always go hand in hand. With a good diet and exercise, ask your doctor if gabapentin could be right for you. They, they always whisper that, but they don't give enough credence to that. Why? Well, because they're trying to sell drugs, okay? And it's hard. It's hard to change your diet. It's hard to not drink soda. It's hard to get to the gym or go outside and walk. I get it. It's not convenient, but check it out. Physical activity has been shown to positively impact epigenetic modifications by reducing DM, DNA methylation and increasing histone modification, both of which are associated with decreasing gene activation. Now, let me give that to you in plain English. What? All right. Regular exercise can promote the expression of genes that protect against CMT and suppress the expression of genes that contribute to its progression. So we talked about two things you can do already. Clean up your diet, start to move. You can't walk because your CMT is too bad. You're in a wheelchair, get to the gym and lift weights. You can wheel around. You can't do that. Our gym has something that we can lower a person in a wheelchair into the water, right? Just get moving. Get an upper body bicycle, it's called an ergometer, okay? Do something to move, dance in your chair, get moving, but exercise will absolutely help with your CMT. Now, if you're not used to running, I wouldn't start running 26.2 miles like a marathon. You might start walking and jogging and go a little slower or bicycling, start out little and then build up from there. That's really important. Ah. Uh... I meditated this afternoon. It is a way to clear the brain. We've known it can lower the blood pressure. It can lower pulse rate. It, it has been proven time and again to help manage stress. Let's face it, guys. We all have stress. We all have stress. We're tied to our work. We're tied to our schedules. We're tied to our watch. We got, we got to go, 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 go. There's a death in the family, car accidents. There's so many different things that we have to deal with. So let's not try and get rid of stress. That's not real, but let's figure out ways to manage our stress. So chronic stress, we'll get to what I was, what I wrote here. 
chronic stress can induce epigenetic change. You know what? I'm just going to go right for the plain English because I'm, I'm having too much fun and running behind. English, please. Stress is bad. Stress is very bad for CMT. You're never going to get rid of your stress. So learn ways to manage it. So I like tech techniques like mindfulness, meditation, yoga, exercise is a way of managing that. Some people like a warm bath, massage, acupuncture, get into bed, read a book. There's lots of different things. Pick something and get it on a regular basis to manage your stress. Stress is bad. It's the gasoline to the fire that you already got going on. Okay. Exposure to toxins is the next thing. So when we talked about epigenetic, we talked about behaviors, and then we talked about environmental toxins. We need to be able to look in our environment and be able to reduce the toxins as little as possible. Get filters for your water. Choose clean food. Organic is best if you can afford it. Go to the farmer's market, get to Whole Foods or Whole Paycheck, right? But whatever you can do to reduce your chemical exposure will definitely take straws off of the CMT back, okay? So we can talk about the methylation patterns and histone activation and all that stuff. But basically these things, these toxins will literally add fuel to the fire. Anything we can do, we already know you have an inherited condition. We already admitted that we're not going to make that go away, but we're on the dimmer. We need to be able to figure out ways to turn that dimmer down. And so we talked about it again, good, clean diet. I like paleo. If you're interested in more information, Chris, we're going to send a video out, or we're going to send an email out after this. And on this email, I'm going to ask Chris to go ahead and put our paleo handout. It explains paleo. It gives you examples and ideas of things that you can eat. So that's one thing that I'm going to include to include for you. I want you to leave with solid tools in your tool bag so you can turn your uh, CMT symptoms down. But exposure to toxins. So start looking around and figuring out how you can lower your toxin exposure. Look at your water. Don't sleep next to your cell phone. Get off the phone so you can sleep at night. All these toxins. Oh, hey, perfect, perfect segue. Sleep is the next one, okay? Sleep is critically important of the four or five things that we're talking about here so far. Sleep could easily be number one. It's critically important. Adequate sleep, enough sleep, good sleep, deep sleep, at least seven to seven and a half hours, probably closer to eight for adults is what we all agree on in the research. Teenagers need more. Infants, way more, okay? Adults, even, even seniors, seven, seven to eight hours is what the research says. So adequate sleep, crucial for epigenetic regulation. During sleep, the body repairs DNA damage and it regulates the expression of genes involved in epigenetic processes. This one's really important. If you're not sleeping well on a regular basis, we're gonna call that chronic sleep deprivation that can literally disrupt these processes and increase the risk of epigenetic changes that contribute to CMT. Plain English, you're going to turn your, your CMT symptoms up and you're going to worsen your condition. So get good, adequate sleep. If you got something that's broken, you need to fix it. Oh, oh, glad I put that in there for myself. I have a YouTube channel. Um, and on that YouTube channel, we have people on there who are learning how to reduce their neuropathy, all types of neuropathy. And very recently, I put out a video called the 12 Serious Hacks for Better Sleep. There's the link. Let's go ahead and put that in the email as well. We got a thumbs up over there. So that's going to show up in the email as well. I'd encourage you to watch the video. YouTube's awesome. It's free. I would encourage you to click the subscribe button because when I come up with a new video, and we got a lot of good ones in the can right now, then you'll get alerted. Oh, Prax has another video and that's just another way to help you out. None of my videos are asking you to become a patient of mine. They're not asking you to join me in my quest, but they're just really providing content to help you out. It's, it's what I do. I love doing it. I love helping people out. So when we send an email for anybody who's on this, then you'll get the 12 Serious Hacks for Better Sleep link. I hope you like it, and I hope you comment at the bottom, and don't forget to hit subscribe. So I want to share with you what we do at Reversing Neuropathy. 
because I know people are going to ask, well, that's all good, but how do you actually do it? What do you guys do? So four basic realms that we coach you on. And number one is coaching. Guess what? We do lifestyle coaching. We just talked about five different things that you can do to improve your CMT or your neuropathy or your CMT neuropathy. So absolutely, we're going to coach you on an anti-inflammatory diet. That's what AI means. We're going to talk about specific neuropathy CMT exercises that'll help you out. We even have things on sleep, meditation. We have all those things there to help mitigate and reduce your neuropathy. Number two, we do recommend, and for the patients who are going through our program, we provide supplements. These supplements are going to be working on inflammation, really lowering inflammation together with a good diet. And, and our focus is always on the diet. So warning, if you don't want to change your diet, you may not want to work with me. I don't know. I just find it to be critically important. We're going to give supplements that will increase circulation and others to detox the body. I will say that I have had people, and one just last week, I said, how'd you do on the diet? He goes, I didn't change anything. How'd you do on the supplements? I did it exactly as you said. <laughs> How are you feeling? 80% better. All right. Well, I guess he did it. But uh, some of you may be able to get away with that, but we want to do all we can to reduce your neuropathy symptoms. We will often use infrared lights. I know there's a gazillion of them. Some of you are already going online right now and searching infrared lights. There's red lights, there's lasers, there's green lights, blue lights, infrared, near infrared, far infrared. There's so many different ones. They all have different functions. Some of them are complete junk out of the Far East, and some of them are actually awesome. We've already done the research. We use the one that we've determined to be the best in the world, um, and we can share more with you as we do if we end up doing a consultation. But what the proper infrared lights do is they increase circulation. So for those freezing cold toes and fingers, we have a strategy for that. One of the supplement, two of the supple supplements actually increase overall body circulation as well. So infrared lights help to increase circulation. And then one of the other things, a key tool that we use is an electric stimulation that stimulates neurogenesis. There's another great Scrabble word right there. Neuro, nerve, genesis, growth. Yes, it's a word. Yes, nerves can grow. We wouldn't have a word if it couldn't be done. Nerves can grow back. Yes, they can. Damaged nerves can grow back. Nerves that are missing, gone, damaged, there's nothing there. You can grow new ones. You can grow new brain cells. It's pretty exciting. You just need to know how to encourage that to happen within the body. This electrical stimulation is not a TENS unit. I'm okay with the TENS unit, but that's basically just a an electrical Tylenol, okay? It's just going to really mitigate or manage your symptoms. Woo! All right, we are doing really good. Uh, I wanted to share with you the resources that I use to help me with this presentation and that you might want to turn to as well. The first one, and this is really thanks to Karen because she turned me on to the Charco Marie Tooth Association. I think she's a leader in our regional, regional group. It's a nonprofit organization that, guess what? helps people, supports people, people can get together, you know, commiserate or share resources like what we're doing here. So I highly recommend the CMTA. It's specific for CMT. Let's go right down to the next one, the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, NINDS. It's part of NIH. I actually pulled some research from this group as well. The Muscular Dystrophy Association, MDA, it's a nonprofit organization. They provide research. I did get some research there as well. Advocacy and support for people with muscular dystrophy, including CMT. And my company, Reversing Neuropathy, is a great resource. I know I'm biased, but when we can accept a patient into our program, we have a 90% success rate. We do track everything. I'm not able to accept everyone into the program. Some cases are too advanced. Some cases not as bad, maybe not bad enough. Some types of neuropathy I'm not able to help, um, but case by case, we take it. If we can accept you into the program, we got a 90% success rate. I want to definitely leave you with more resources. Some of these are going to be absolutely free and some of them will be at a nominal cost. Uh, number one, I wrote a book. It's called Reversing Neuropathy, Making the Impossible Possible. Okay. 
It sells on Amazon. Uh, again, I think I'm biased. I feel like it's pretty good. I wrote it. I write it in a talking format, kind of like what I'm doing here. Not like a textbook. That's a lot of those big words. Um, so I do it in a conversational manner. You can get that on Amazon. For those of you who are here, I tell you, if you need access to the book, are we going to give copies away? All right, I'm just getting a nudge from my producer over here. We are going to give copies of the actual book or the PDF version. He says the actual book. The actual book. If you're on this call now, then we're going to send you an email. We're going to give you a way to get a free copy of the book. If you're on YouTube, you're going to be like, oh, man, what about me? Hit us up in the comments below. For a limited time, we're going to give away the free books. There's only a certain number of these, okay? So hurry up, put it in the comment. I want the free book. We have just a few of those available. But for anybody who's on this call, we'll send you an email. and You just click it, let us know your address, and we will ship a copy out. All right, one, two, three. three. We have three free resources I want you to have access to. We'll put those in the email too, right? So we're going to give you links to this as well. I have a Facebook support group. Wouldn't you know it? It's called Dr. Prax's Reversing Neuropathy Facebook Support Group. It's pretty awesome. We have a bunch of people in there, a lot of people in there, and they support people just like they do at CMTA. You also get access to me, my content, uh, any of the videos that I put out, and we do look at your questions there, and we do answer those. So that's the Facebook uh, support group. That's free. YouTube is awesome. I'm a big fan of YouTube. Kudos to YouTube. I'm going YouTube live right now. I also have a YouTube channel, as I mentioned before. That is free. You could go in there. I have over 300 videos at the time of this recording. There's more and more coming. But on the YouTube channel, I just offer video after video after video of ways to help with your neuropathy, including CMT. It behooves you to click the subscribe button. Like I said before, when you're a subscriber, then you get access right away. When a new video comes on, you will know about it. Okay. And what else? I would like to offer a consultation. We're going to do this at a limited time as well for anyone who's here through the CMT group or on this webinar right now, we're offering you a free consultation with me and my team members. Uh, the consultation will be a detailed history to figure out what's going on. We'll do an examination. By the way, we can do this virtually too. So I'm here in Charlottesville, Virginia. We're consulting with people in California who I consulted today, Florida who I consulted today. And I didn't consult today, but England, Scotland, and other areas around the world. So if you're on YouTube and you're like, dang, I wish I was in your area, we can consult with you as well. If you're interested in a consultation, we'll put that in an email as well. Let's see, for those of you who are on YouTube right now, just put just, just put a, put a, a comment at the bottom. I'd like the free consultation. Uh, that also comes with my recommendations on a, on a follow-up visit. So I wanted to leave you with as much information as possible. I want to leave you with tools so you can have in your toolbox somewhere to start. You should be able to do something, okay? I'm here for you. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. I'm keeping you in my thoughts. I'm Dr. Prax. That's my webinar. I look forward to reviewing your comments and hearing back all the positive stories about how this webinar changed your life. Neuropathy is reversible. We may not be able to turn it all the way off with CMT, an inherited condition, but what if you could turn it down 10%? Wouldn't that be great? What about 25? What about 50? I've had people with CMT get more than 50%, 75 and 80%. One of them was 90. Results vary. Start with a consultation. If you don't want to do that, I've left you several other free things that you can do. I really hope this has helped. We're going to open it up to some questions and answers. Chris, you got my producer over here has got the controls over there. Karen's on board. There's Karen again, popping back on. If you have any questions, here I am. I see a lot of people joining. Alan says, thank you. I really appreciate that. It looks to me like I must have done such a fantastic job, Karen. It looks like I just covered everything. They have no questions. I got them stumped. Usually we get a few questions here. That's okay. I'll, I'll remain for another few minutes. I'm not offended. Y'all just came here to listen to my spiel and how I would approach CMT. Gave you lots of resources. I'm here for you guys. We got another couple minutes. 
I am going to ask a, a question. I'm going to break, break the, uh, the ice and do it. I know you talk about the paleo diet. Yep. And it contains a lot of anti-inflammatories. And of course, I saw fish and avocados and chicken and uh, some other things that I recognize. What are some of the best foods that you have found that really help? Yeah, anti-inflammatory. That's a really, really good question. And, and you just triggered a memory as well. Let me answer Alan's question real quick because it's a fast one. Alan says, you're in Charlottesville, Virginia. Yes, we're in Charlottesville, Virginia. We're about two hours uh, south of D.C. We can do this remotely as well. So we can be right in your living room. That's how local we are. Looks like Jessica is saying, great webinar. Very informative. Thank you. Hi, Betty. Betty says, thanks. Always professional. Aw, appreciate that. Love you, Betty. Back to Karen. Paleo diet. I, I want to give you another resource. My favorite book, really simply titled, it's called The paleo diet okay and it's written by the author lauren cordain you can you can amazon it or google it um dr cordain has his own website that's i found to be incredibly resourceful tons of free content on there as well i'm sure you can get the paleo diet karen for really cheap as a used book i'm certain it's out there you probably get it for like five dollars or less it's an incredible book but to answer your question I would I would approach that Karen backwards and instead of uh, I will answer your question there are there are anti-inflammatory foods but what I want to cover are the inflammatory foods because that's an easier topic the inflammatory foods the foods that you eat that can make inflammation come into your body the biggies sugar carbs dairy I'm squinting because I know people are people are like, that's it, I'm out. I see all kinds of people dropping off. I'm just kidding. But um, uh, yeah, those are the big inflammatory foods, processed foods, foods in a can. When you read, uh, I wish I had a label of something here, but when you read the label of a bar or something and you see like five ingredients and you recognize it like figs, almonds, honey, you know, stuff that you that might be in your cabinet or, or maybe your grandma's cabinet. I would say that's okay. But when we see all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, three, four, five, six different syllables, maltodextrin, F, D, and C, yellow six, yellow five. <laughs> when you see crap like that, that you're like, you, you know that wasn't in grandma's cupboard or in the refrigerator. That's just bad. Let's just think about it. When they have to put all kinds of stuff in there and you got this many ingredients for a protein bar, that's inflammatory. So Karen, you really nailed it. It's the good oils and the good fats. So many people have been made to be afraid of fat, but you nailed a couple real good ones right there. And that's gonna be our omega-3s. If I go back up to that slide, we wanna get fish, salmon tops the list, mackerel. Some of the other fish is gonna be is gonna be really good. Tuna, we, have, we do need to be careful because unfortunately we polluted our waters right? So we have mercury in the water. We got aluminum. We got all kinds of crap. If they study the water, we're even seeing medications are coming through and ending up in fish. It kind of goes up that food chain. So we do need to be careful with that. We want to get line caught fish, not, not farmed fish. This is important because farmed fish is just like cows that are not grass fed. You want to get grass fed beef. Did you know that grass fed beef actually has a lot of omega threes in it? normal fish yeah so you can get omega-3s in your steak but if you get the regular stuff that is grain fed yeah it tastes good because it fattens up the cows and we love the taste of fat in our meat but it is there's no omega-3s in that in the fish this farm race there's no omega-3s they might be throwing some of it in the food that they eat but they're basically feeding them corn and wheat and just crap which you know fish aren't supposed to eat so Avocado oil, olive oil has a lot of good fat. Nuts, most nuts, peanuts, my favorite food on the planet is not a nut, it's a legume. But um, so peanuts aren't included in the, in the good food program, but almonds, walnuts, Brazil nuts, all those nuts are really, really high in good omega-3s, anti-inflammatories. 
So I hope that answered your question. That was a long-winded answer. But uh, Dr. Cordain in his book, uh, The Paleo Diet, and for those of you who are on here on YouTube and on this webinar, we'll send you our paleo handout. I see he's cranking out that, that email right now. So we'll send you a copy of my paleo. We call it the Paleo Kitchen. It also has recipes uh, so that you can make some pretty good tasting foods and be healthy. Hey, we got a couple other comments here, Karen. I wanted to read these. Oh, hey, Jerry. I love Jerry. So Jerry says, hi, Dr. Brian. Jerry in Ohio. We love you, Jerry. Uh, he, uh, well, I have to be careful with, uh, Jerry's a good friend of ours. Let's just say that. Blaze, let's see. Blaze says, can Karen share more about her experience in the clinic? Uh, Melissa, thank you for all you've done for me, Dr. Prax. Melissa, I'm glad you joined. Melissa has one of the craziest stories. This is a HIPAA violation, uh, but since I didn't list her last name, that's been a tough case, Melissa, right? A tough and crazy case. I didn't use her last name, so I guess I could use it. Melissa, you don't care, right? Jerry says, love you. Oh, you guys. Anyway, um, Melissa, I thought for sure that she had some environmental toxin with her neuropathy. She was too young for all the symptoms that she was having. It just wasn't making sense. This is a uh, a female, she's in good shape, she eats well, she exercises, or at least she did, and she just came down with this neuropathy that her doctors couldn't figure out. And to be honest, it took me until very recently before I figured it out. I thought for sure that she had mold. And I talk about that, how I solved another younger person's case. I really should have said, Melissa, I think I did. I said, hey, there's something in your environment. Something's not making sense. She doesn't have diabetes, no history of chemo. Just nothing was making sense. She's way too young for this. Um, but she goes, you can share. I, I appreciate that. At Melissa's work, this is unbelievable. They found over a hundred snakes in the, in the ceiling tiles. And now I just heard today that they found live snakes in the walls and up in the ceiling tiles, they found over a hundred, I might be wrong, but over a hundred different snake bodies that were decaying. And here, this is gross, right? Here she is sitting under this. They say it smells like a daggum farm in it. She says 127. She, <laughs> it's an unbelievable story, but decaying snakes is toxic. So if you have decaying snakes in your home, you need to get rid of those. But the, the more realistic thing, that was such a surprise, crazy story. Melissa, I got to interview you once we get this neuropathy fixed. We, I told her, we got to get you out of this place. It is toxic. You did find mold too, right? So she got mold. She got decaying animals where she's working. It's just nasty. So that goes back to the slide that I was sharing. Environmental toxins, we got to start looking around. 120, can you even imagine that? 127 snakes dead and alive. And she's working around these every day. Ugh, that's gross. Let's see. That's that just story. gives me shivers thinking about working around 127 snakes. That gives me the shivers. I mean, definitely the live ones I'm not okay with. But even the dead ones, I mean, they're decaying. It's so gross. Yeah. And, and Melissa's employer just kept fighting it. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. She found some mold in the wall. What'd they do? They came over and painted over it. There you go. That's all fixed. Mm. <laughs> That's not going to fix the mold. So uh, mm. now I do want to share um, with everyone, you know, the experience that, that I had in the clinic. Oh yeah. I appreciate that. Um, so I have CMT type two, J, which is uh, you know pretty rare. Even with CMT, it's pretty rare, um, and it affects pretty close head to toe of my body. So I'm yeah. pretty close to um, paralyzed, basically from the mid thigh down. Yeah. So I had. Um, I thought, well, you know, I've tried just about everything else. Let's, you know, see about this reversing the, the neuropathy part, you know, to at least give me a little bit of feeling and function. So I set up my, my appointment. I came in and I was very guarded. 
there there's no other way to put it because you know you there's so many things out there that you know they tell you this will help this will help and I think most people with CMT probably knows that there's not a lot of things that can help mm. but to actually learn that there are natural ways to help myself was fantastic that you know put me over the top and then when um i had the electro whatever that thing is the, elect the electric stimulator you had your feet in the bucket yes and you know the funny thing was that you know during this time we went over the other test results and you know my nerves were 100 percent damaged and which is you know at that point there's you know not a lot of anything is going to help but you know i took my feet out of the bucket and my husband was there with me for moral support and he was drying my feet and i said hold the bus <laughs> i stopped everybody from talking because i actually felt the towel that went across my feet and the first time i thought okay yeah it's just you know, psychosomatic because I wanted it so bad. But then when I could, you know, when he did it again, I was like, yes, yes, I felt it. So it was an unbelievable experience, you know, to know that, you know, a half an hour of the electric stimulation gave me some feeling. Now, you know, with that, what it did was it, it, took me back to where I was, you know, a couple of years ago. And I had that, you know, the numbness. Now I have nothing, you know, no, no feeling normally. Mm. Um, but after that stimulation, you know, I had the numbness, the tingling, and I could feel the, the tail. And I could feel, you know, when my husband put my shoes and socks back on, and for several days after that stimulation, well, probably about a week after Whoa. that, that one, maybe 30, 40 minute stimulation, mm -hmm. I, I had feelings. So I know that it, it's definitely possible to regenerate those nerves. And it's, it, it's just an, un, it was unbelievable which is why I said, please, <laughs> please, you know, share this wonderful information with, with all of us CMTers who feel like, you know, we're waiting for treatments and there's not a lot out there, you know, going so well. And we got treatments in the pipe, but, you know, that doesn't help us right now. And knowing that there is something that does help and can help. Um, it, it was just truly amazing. I mean, I had te I got tears in my eyes right now thinking about it. <laughs> but it you know, was that's such, a, that's such a profound story. And not to not to pat myself or the technology on the back, but for those people who are watching and listening, they can at least hear that one person, a real live person actually felt a difference that gives hope for those people who are watching like wow this is possible you said the word and that's why i titled the book making the impossible possible it's possible i didn't say that it that it's 100 percent guaranteed i said it's possible because if somebody said uh who who was that um henry ford henry ford said if you think you can or think you cannot, you are right. So what that means is if you think that you cannot, like I get a lot of naysayers on the YouTube channel. I don't understand why I'm just putting out content. You know, I'm just putting out stuff to help people. And I got people commenting on there. This is a bunch of hogwash. Neuropathy is irreversible. Like, well, if that's what you believe, strongly, strongly believe, 
I would I'd be willing to bet it is going to be reverse irreversible for you. But Karen, just sharing your story about one little treatment that lasted 30 minutes long helped with your symptoms for one week. That's just going to give possibility, hopefully open up some minds. And I hope you got, Karen and others, I hope you all got more tips that you can apply. And, you know, Karen and everybody else is on here. You all have received the very best, the most modern treatment that Western medicine has to offer with your gabapentin, uh, your Lyrica, amitriptyline, even opioids, you, you are receiving the very best, the top that medicine has to offer. Johns Hopkins, University of Virginia, the Mayo Clinic, the Cleveland Clinic, that's it. That's, that's it. You have got the best. There's nothing else out there in medicine. So guys, we're going to have to turn inside. We're always looking for the answer outside. I mean, let's face it. It's much easier to put on a cream uh, or, or rub some magic potion on us or take, take a pill. That's easy to take a pill. Y'all already tried that and it's not working because if it was, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> you wouldn't be spending an hour of your time listening to a, the five best things you can do to help your CMT. So it's not working. I know it's not working. Okay. You got better things you could be doing. So what's next? Suffer. Woe is me. Hang your head low or pull yourself up by your bootstraps and say, I'm, I'm going to try that diet. I'm going to, I'm going to get that book. I'm going to start to exercise no matter what it takes. I'm going to look at my sleep. I'm going to look at my toxins. I'm going to do all those things that he suggested because what the heck, guys? Let's say worst case scenario, you really do all of those things and you do it hard for like a month or maybe three. Let's say you're really motivated. You're really motivated. You do it for six months. And let's say it doesn't change your CMT one single bit. Have you harmed yourself? Have you done anything bad? Are there any side effects for good lifestyle? Of course there's not right? So we need to just think about putting in good things in our body and taking away those environmental toxins that are damaging your genes. You have nothing to lose. Eat good, exercise, all those things, sleep, mitigate your stress, do all you can. You have only things to gain. Maybe your CMT doesn't change at all, but you end up with more energy. You end up with better digestion. Maybe you can get off half of your medications with which have a whole plethora of side effects. I just don't understand. I know it's hard, but living with CMT is hard too. You have to decide is the is the difficulty and the pain level of living with CMT. I know it's here. It's way up here. But is the lifestyle changes that I'm suggesting maybe it's here or for some of you it's it's I'd rather not change my lifestyle. Most people are like, I want to keep my feet and losing my feet is actually worse than eating well. That's what I, that's what I hope for you is that you give it a shot. You give it a try. What have you got to lose? I think we had some more, some other questions on here. Let me go. I'm looking on my phone right here. Uh, Melissa said I can share. Oh, Betty says, amen. Hope is the key. Uh, Jess says, amazing story. Thanks for sharing. Hey guys, we're about ready to wrap up. If you're on YouTube, I wish uh, we should have gone on YouTube and see what kind of comments are in there. Uh, I'm a, I'm a one man show. My producer over here, we're about ready to, we're about ready to wrap up. Does anybody have any other questions or any last minute thoughts, anything you want to share before we wrap it up? Because Karen told me offline, I said, how long should we make this, this webinar? She goes, well, a lot of us have fatigue. I don't know if we'll be able to last longer than 30 minutes. But hey, Karen, you're still awake, so that's a good sign. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. Well, it looks it like was all that are... organic coffee I had today. Oh, hey, okay. So yeah, I did. I actually did a video on, on coffee. Are you referring to the video that I did on coffee? I am. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and call Dr. Prax out. I'm not saying that coffee is a health food product, but I like it. I'm, a, I'm an aficionado. So I did a I did a I did a, a video for me to justify my habit. And uh, <laughs> uh, coffee actually has some pretty good attributes to it, but it is pretty acidic. But you got you gotta have to watch my video on coffee. And she's right. Coffee is 
really bastardized and they they put they spray all kinds of stuff on coffee it's in these second and third world countries and then we ship it over here y'all are drinking so much so many chemicals with your coffee so yeah spend a few extra dollars and get organic it tastes better probably because it doesn't have all those chemicals in it all right anyone else I feel like we did a pretty good job. It's 7.05. We started at about 6.05. It's one hour. I think we can wrap up. Go ahead, Karen. looks like you have something else to say. Well, I just wanted to thank you so much for, you know, sharing all of your findings and the research that you've done through the years with us. I have gained a lot of knowledge and I'm really looking forward to that email that Chris is going to be sending out to us. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and I've already started using, I've got the book <laughs> and I've already started, you know, looking at my diet and doing a little more eating proper and not as much. Although I did have a chili dog today. <laughs> I, I couldn't help myself. That's my <laughs> kryptonite. That is, the kryptonite. That is, that's my kryptonite. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what. I tell you what, this is what this is what I want to do for you. What you want to do, Karen, for something like that, like your kryptonite, is just start looking at better products. All right. So there are hot dogs. If you've ever seen how they're made, they're yeah, they're, they're it's pretty nasty, and they got a lot of parts you don't even really want to know about. But just yeah. get online and start. Maybe you just even Google something like alternative to chili. Uh, what, what was your kryptonite? A chili chili hot chili, dog. Chili hot dog. Yeah, type in like all natural chili hot dog, chili hot dog recipe, natural healthy chili hot dog. Just put in that and then you'll get the hot dog or maybe it's a sausage and you'll get the right beans and you'll get all this stuff. And then you just buy different products. You can have your chili hot dog and eat it too. You can have your cake and eat it too. Okay, that's a good idea. I will definitely give that a try. Yeah. So, you know, I like beer, but I don't like drinking the alcohol. So I have non-alcoholic beer. Tastes pretty good. I don't get the effects of the alcohol. I'm drinking a beer, but it's not alcohol. And I'm not saying it's the healthiest thing on the planet, but it's a better alternative. When I had my coffee today, as they said in the video, I had it in my reversing neuropathy cup, but I had organic my first cup of coffee was organic caffeinated. That's first thing in the morning. And then afternoon, I think I had two cups of organic decaf. I couldn't tell the difference. It's organic, it's decaf, and I, I'm, it's not going to affect me while sleeping. So, yeah, you guys, uh, Alan, you're welcome. He says, thank you for sharing all this information. Blaze Jerry says, hello, what's happening? If you're still on. We're going to go ahead and wrap up. Chris is working on that letter, what, maybe by tomorrow or the end of the week. Chris says he'll have that letter out by the end of the week. So he's going to work late today to get this letter out to you by tomorrow with all those resources for you there, okay? That sounds wonderful. Thank you again, right. Dr. Prex. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. I appreciate you for inviting me here today too, Karen. Thank you so much. Blessings to all of you. I wish you the best. For those of you who are on YouTube, Leave me some comments. I know it's going to be, it will be recorded. The secret's out now. The secret's out now, Karen. I, I am recording it. So we're going to save this. We'll put it up on YouTube, probably the Facebook support group as well. So for those of you, you have your colleagues and, and folks that you know, Karen, just have them reach out to us or you, maybe maybe we can get Karen a link as well. So we'll, we'll make sure that we'll, we'll uh, make that recorded video available too. Wonderful. Well, we definitely appreciate it. And um, we'll be looking for, for more videos and more information from you. All right. And I look forward to seeing you on the YouTube, Karen, and all you others. Make sure you put your name. We will respond. We love you guys. Take right. good care. I'm signing out. All right. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like it by hitting the thumbs up button down below. Also, you can share it with a friend or family member by hitting the share button. That's a little arrow at the bottom of the video. You might also want to subscribe to the channel. What you're going to do there is hit the little button at the bottom right side of the video. That way, when new content comes out, you'll be the first to know. Lastly, please comment 
I'd love to hear your comments. I will read it and I will respond. Thank you and have a great day.